What's up guys, hope everyone is doing well. In this video, I'm gonna be going over some updates for Bitcoin, and then I wanna to touch on some news related info towards the end. To go and get it started here. First off, there's an update for this daily chart. This ascending black trend range that we can see right here, John, specifically with respect to the hidden bullish divergence we've seen here on the RSI from said point on the price, really encompassing this entire area right here throughout this uptrend that we have seen going all the way back to around November of last year when Bitcoin hit uh, what is most likely, it seems all things considered, the low, this bear market, 15.4 thousand. Ultimately, the picture I wanna paint here is just, right now, uh, I'm personally leaning to Bitcoin holding basically approximately 25,000. If I lose that, then like I've been saying for quite some time, 24,000 to around 22,000 would be next, and then around 21, approximately 21,000 all the way down to around approximately 19,000 would be after that. If we lose that, then I believe be more likely set new lows below 15.4 thousand other than just retesting this range back here, ranging from around 17.8 to like I said, around 15.4 thousand. Um, but I, do, I don't think that is most likely like I have been badgering on recently in my videos, although it can happen. So with respect to this ascending trend zone right here with respect to the hidden bullish divergence with our most recent downside we've seen from basically approximately 30,000 halfway in august to this uh, low range we've set recently right in this area we're roughly holding this zone right here so uh, like i said i'm personally leaning to seeing this uh, zone held if we actually go all the way back to the build up that we saw after the march crash, um, which again, just to quickly reiterate, I'll have cars link in this video tomorrow and I'll really break down my phase cycle theory, but according to that, I believe we're going to see a bull market very, very similar to how things happened back here in March up to, you know, when it went 64,000. And if we go back, we're basically right here in this area, in this sort of range right here, but if we actually go to, um, I believe it was uh, yeah, September 9th, 10th, you can see we were setting this low right here, this last local load, approximately 10,000 before things finally then went up to 64,000. We had then set 69,000. We've been in this bear market so far. It takes us to where we are right here. We've seen a fairly similar um, uptrend of bullish build up to the bullish build up we saw after the March crash. It's been a little, a little bit longer, looks a little bit different harmonic wise, but it is very similar nonetheless. And is showing decay like it should be with the maturation of Bitcoin over time. But if we actually take this right here, we can see that going all the way back to right here, September 9th, the 10th is when we headed uh, into this lowest local low we've set here, wicking down to 24.9 thousand. We've been building up ever since, similar to how we did prior. Um, so again, the final picture on here is basically, I think we're gonna hold this right now until we start to lose um, 25,000, but really more so around 24.8 lines up with the wick. Well, around 24.7, the wick that we hit back in June, on June 16th of this year. Um, unless we lose that, I think we'll continue to go sideways maybe a little bit, but then build up more so, I think, into October. I think October most likely will be when things uh, actually break this uptrend range right here for the hidden bullish divergence. I think we'll Likely, like I've been saying, I think 28 to 29,000 is going to be important. Once we break that, then I think it's possible that we could start to shoot up towards, uh, as I said in one of my recent videos, 40 to 50,000 is a general range, taking different macro patterns on the weekly chart. I think it was like three or four that I took with a macro falling wedge, a cup and handle, an unorthodox cup and handle if you want to entertain it, uh, and an unorthodox uh, bullish megaphone as well, um, creating a range. And maybe another one that I forget. Uh, if we break top side here instead of continuing to go lower, whether or not we hit this orange red zone or go lower than the lowest low, 15.4 thousand. Assuming we go up here, um, then I think the 40 to 50 thousand dollar range probably is where it will hit. 
Um, if we take a look here at this chart, this is a four day chart. So this ascending black range is not the same range as one on the prior chart, but I decided to draw a trend line with respect to the low we set back here on the around September 22nd of last year to the low kind of low we set around March 6th of this year around 21. So that spans from basically 18.7, 18.5 to 18.7 up to 21.5 to 21.7 thousand. Uh, and then I lowered that a little bit to reach down to the wick lows back in March of this year. And they created the range. You can see each of these black circles with black arrows. This has obviously been in a very important macro ascending trend zone. You can see this is what we lost it. Got the final almost straight down dump into 2018, 2019. This was the kind of final blow off top moment. We saw rejection 2017, had a minor retracement, had the blow off top to 20,000. You can see it was very important for after the March crash, we had this build up into the bull market up to 64,000. You can see that we found rejection heading into May around 10,000, set sideways, finally broke above it, came back down and then found support at around 10,000 and then had that blast off to uh, 64,000. Um, what I do find interesting here, so if I zoom in, and this had this as a last moment idea not too long ago when I was looking over the charts, but so this upper curve right here is uh, a clone so I or I, rather the second and the third one is a clone of the first one, which is drawn specifically with respect to the wick high right here. Um, and then finished it out right here with this wick high back in June. And then I just located the center one to touch each of these wicks as we descended right here. Uh, like I said, I cloned that and then took it the bottom one down to the sideways actually got in this bullish build up back in around May, June, July of 2020. And what I found, as you already seen, I'm going to zoom out prior. This predicted the um, assumed, at the very least, bear market low. It seems most likely to be the bear market low, 15.4 thousand. We range sideways a little bit and finally have entered this uptrend as I've been speaking about. Um, we're now coming into shortly, if we continue to go lower here, we lose, like I said, approximately 25,000. The ascending, the linear uptrend sits roughly at around, like I said, 25,000 to around 23.5 thousand. And then this white range begins picks up at around like i said 23,000 23,000 all the way down to at lowest if we were to see a god candle to the downside around 19.2 thousand um, which going back to this daily chart is lines up with the beginning of the lowermost range i have on this daily chart um, as i've been saying i do think bottom of the barrel bull market supports approximately 20,000 if we see 20,000 i do personally have some sort of risk tolerance for Wicklow's down to as low as, you know, maybe approximately 18.5 thousand. Something similar to a March type crash. Not necessarily there's going to be some sort of like societal catalyst with COVID uh, along those lines possible. Um, anything else is possible as well, but we could see a major Wicklow because of that. And really what I'm going to tie all this analysis in towards the end of the video, when I go over the news, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to and with the thumbnail, I'm likely the title lose to this white, uh, white swan events, um, opposite of black swan events. Uh, but anyways, um, so I have this fib retracement drawn on here. We can see that, again, just to kind of confirm, draw more conclusion to this, most likely being the bottom. It met the 0.618 to the 0.541. A golden pocket zone was met with respect to 64,000 all the way down to this uh, phases uh, cycle current second one and third one for Bitcoin. Um, and on this four day chart, uh, one of the things that I went over in my last video was the moving averages. And I forgot to touch on something on the three day chart, but what I was talking about in that video was how we look here at this two day chart, this turquoise or the blue moving average and the white moving average. So the blue moving average is the 50 estimated moving average, the white moving average is 200 estimated moving average. We can see that we have gotten we saw our bearish cross flip right here. We've seen the bullish flip leading in this uptrend, and we're getting close to crossing below. As we can see, we go back to this prior bear market. We see we got the bear market cross, finally brought back above it. And the only time in history where we see this cross back below after this, the prior signal, like the actual bear market for Bitcoin's structure, cyclically speaking, you can see when we got this cross, we had already bottomed out. 
and we were building up uh, moving averages being lagging indicators it makes sense to see something like that going back to the 14 2014 2015 bear market see our bearish flip we get the bullish cross and we didn't even see it like i said this right here is the only time we've seen this happen where we see the bearish flip we see it flip bullish again and we saw a very short term cross right there indicating right before the bull market really begins so like i said we've got the bearish flip right here we've seen that crossover and we're getting close to doing that um, again to reiterate if we do indeed get this cross again on this two-day chart i think that is probably one of uh, at the very least one of the best buy signals you could possibly see again one of this financial advice is going over my personal ideas on what i think about the market um but if we go to the and this is what i forgot to mention if we go to the three day we see bearish flip bearish flip but it gets crossover right here like i was going over the two day we go back here and yeah, we got the bearish flip crossover and we can see that this three-day chart we had the bearish flip leading into 15.4 thousand zooming in here we can see we got the bullish cross but then we crossed over as soon as we started to set the low right here and this roughly downsides mostly sideways action we've been seeing from around 25.8 to around 27,000. Um, so given this is the two day, this being, or well, I went over the two day, this is the three day, uh, given that these are so close on the daily time frames, I'm personally looking at this as a borderline confirmation right here, this crossing as what would happen if we saw the cross on the two day, um, what we see here on the three day might basically be foreshadowing a cross that's going to be coming here in the number couple few weeks maybe you know month and a half the longest where we'll continue to see bitcoin kind of just you know maybe go sideways a little bit longer then start to scale up or maybe it'll scale up a little bit quicker here um but like i said moving average being lagging indicators we can see bitcoin go up from here moving average continues to go low lower we get that brief cross which would again going back to march we can see that's what happened back here we crossover well price had already bottomed out and it was moving up the entire time while the 50 email was going down um but outside of that the last thing i want to touch on is, is that we here on this four day chart just recently got a uh, cross here on this rvi the default velocity index so this could also be hinting um at seeing some positive action towards the upside if we take a look here at this macd you can see that we have been going down basically ever since when we first hit thirty thousand. but we are seeing some form of a bullish divergent or not bullish divergence my bad hidden bullish divergence um here as well in the macd but I would take that with a grain of salt. You can see that we are though, which is important. The histogram has been building up. The moving average has been flat lighting. I um, mean, we could likely be seeing a cross here soon. And factoring that in with the RBI, seeing that cross. Last time we got something like this, when we hit this pink zone, would go all the way back to 15. And it's actually, you can see it's you know roughly similar to, it actually went lower than when we hit 15.4 thousand, which is part of the hidden bullish divergence I've been going over. Is one of the reasons why I think this is a great time to buy um just because we're more you know like on our side as well here on the side of the eye went lower than it did when price was all the way back down to 15.4 thousand i see something like that as kind of the last best time the final moments when bitcoin sets a local low before it really starts to go parabolic towards the upside um but here for this other four day chart so similar boxes here you know the orange and then the red I extended all the way down to the midline of this lower white dashed line being the uh, if we were to take the retracement from 20,000 to this bear market low in 2018 this is the halfway point of the downside this bear market downside from 2018 to 2019 um, so again so the, the thesis for this video is going to be me kind of reiterating a little bit what I've been going over in my recent videos specifically with to with respect to the uh, bull bear dichotomy video that I made and like I said at the end I'm going to touch on some news to further uh, exemplify why I think we're more likely at the very least to see something like this turquoise green yellow or orange pattern rather than seeing something like the red or by any means especially going all the way down to 
what some people still predict as a possibility. I mean, it's a possibility, but I think it's a very unlikely one. There's still plenty of people. And most of the, for the most part, the crowd's mostly bearish right now as well. But there's still plenty of people saying 10, 9, 8K is borderline inevitable um, at some point. And then we haven't actually bottomed out. Um, but like I was saying, either the blue, green, yellow, or orange, I think is most likely. I think at the very least, maybe we go down to like 20,000, see some wicks down to 18,000 roughly or so. I think at the very least, 15.4 thousand was definitely indeed the bottom, all things considered. Um, and then like I've been saying, 33,000 is going to be highly important. Start breaking on, on the daily and higher, especially the weekly, getting a candle close above that and then opening one above that subsequently at some point. But I mean, like I've been saying, nothing's really changed. I still think 180K, it's 200, approximately 180K to 250K is the most likely upside range for the upcoming bull market top. Whether it is next year, like I personally believe right now, my bias is that it's going to line up roughly with the halving of next year around March, April, May. Um, but in general, I do think, uh, you know, either 2024, or 2025 will be when Bitcoin sets a new all-time high. And even if it goes down, let's say it takes this red path and goes all the way down to 12,000, roughly 12,000. Um, even if that happens and we see it's kind of a medium term resumption of a bear market, um, it's still definitely could, you know, build all the way up, uh, around 180 to 250 K before the ending of 2025. I personally believe, um, if we look here at the six day chart, um, uh, again, I touched on this one in recent videos, strong similarities to my specific cycle theory and what I think is most likely. You saw this brief cross here on the six day chart of the Ichimoku cloud, uh, Ichimoku cloud rather. Uh, we've seen something similar right here as well. So I haven't got that cross yet, um, but if we do begin to start going up here. We can instead of hit our local low. Once we see this cross again, I think that will be something similar to whether or not we get that 50 EMA cross on the uh, two day to three day as I was, or the two day specifically as I was mentioning earlier. Um, if we look here at the RSI, again, uh, we've been in this uptrend, broken out of the macro triangle. We're heading into our white vertical range that we've met going all the way back to the first triangle in 2011 that I went over in one of my recent videos. And from November 15.4,000 last year to our current local low, printing the hidden bullish divergence, the entire trend line, as we can see down here, we met that recently with our um, local low or wick low. Uh, another reason why I think we're going to bounce from here rather than significantly losing, uh, you know, 24.5, approximately 24.5 thousand at this point. Um, but outside of that, lastly, actually may have been something I'm going to check here. I may or may have not wanted to, oh, never mind. Okay. So the last thing in terms of the technical analysis. Um, as I've gone over in the past on the channel, when it comes to the SBX, the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, uh, and just the fiat market in general, I believe we are heading into a crash that is going to be very similar, if not worse, than what we saw back in 2008 to 2009. Um, plenty of news outlets, uh, articles in the last two years roughly have been printed and put out, or at least, you know, published online, rather. Um, saying that we are heading, you know, we're obvious, it's clear that we're in a recession and I'm going to touch on the inflation and things like that later on, but clear the market's not doing too good for many reasons. Um, and, uh, on top of that, the, where the, you know, the social setting is the politics. When you look at this chart right here, going all the way back to basically the beginning of 1995, we have our first end pattern A to B to C to D. And that's when we entered C to D March crash, or not March crash, rather the uh, 2008, 2009 market crash. And then we go A, B, C, D. So then C to D lining up here. It's the same time period over time as well. If we begin at the very first A, the first peak happened in 2000. We go straight to C seven years later. We get the crash seven years later. We get a correction right here with respect to A to B. And then we go fast forward seven years later again. We're now at the C point, waiting in the C to D. Each of these, to keep them strictly at actual seven year intervals, you can see that each of these line up just a little bit, some sort of period of time before the actual you know, drop off here. You can see each and every single time A, C, A, and C. Um, and then we slowly start to go down. Now, like I said, plenty of 
sources saying that it's you know at least going to be like 2008 2009 crash uh, many of them saying it's going to be worse i definitely think it's very possible and plausible that it, it will be worse um at this point we are lagging behind a little bit um if i zoom in here pointing out c to d you can see that oh, let me zoom in fully you can see I grabbed the highlighter here, but we had this kind of like hook right here, and then we just went straight down. Again, we have this kind of like hook, and then we go straight down. Uh, I believe that's what we're seeing right here, but I think we're going to see it over a long. We're, we're seeing it over a longer period of time, and then we'll eventually go down. Um, last time around, when it crashed in 2008, went down around 57, basically 58 percent. That puts us more at around 2,000, but in general, especially if it's worse, I think the range is likely around 2,000, probably 2,000 to 1,600 is generally going to line up with finding some sort of support with respect to the A to B retracement. Um, also, if we look here at the the, uh, um, the 200 estimated moving average is upper one and the white one is that's going to be the 475 EMA creating this range where you can see we dip below right here. See, it started to dip below right here for both this purple. Whether or not we see um, this low set next year or due to some sort of this being lengthened, we're going to see it sometime in 2025, uh, given that kind of hook pattern that I went over. This range right here, uh, 200 EMA is obviously a pivotal uh, moving average when it comes to many things, but this 400 EMA down here goes right down to the wick, which is clearly also important. And then it, it further affirms this range on top of the this you know 27 plus year long uh, macro pattern and this is on this is on it and if i were to go to which i i won't in this video i haven't passed videos if i look at the nasdaq and the new york stock exchange you see the same exact pattern unfolding on those charts as well it's a little bit different for one of them i don't remember which one it is specifically but one of them the harmonics of the price movements are a little bit different but it's still the same pattern um, nonetheless um so now to get to the news, um, the first off topic of the video really is the white swans. Um, when it comes to the white swan, it's basically the opposite of the black swan. As you can see here, white swan is an easily predictable event that is anticipated based on current information forecasting, um, whereas black swans are highly improbable, uh, very unlikely, essentially impossible to predict. Uh, it is sure to occur. Its impact is easy to quantify. Human error is usually considered the cause of such events. We see a recession as a good example of a white swan event. Metrics such as a rising unemployment, inflation, and negative GDP growth are signs of a recession. While no one can tell the exact date, what is certain is that economy-related issues, white swan events, are going to occur at some point. Um, and this is basically what I'm saying. Uh, the, the thumbnail of the video had two white swans with uh, fiat subversion and decoupling. It's kind of these are essentially two sides of the same coin because fiat subversion is going to lead into what the decoupling is, which is when Bitcoin starts to um, have an inverse correlation in relationship with things that are within the traditionalized fiat market, such as the stock indices, the SPX that I've gone over, and gold as well. There's been short periods of time in the past, and also recently within twenty, especially twenty twenty one and this year, which I'll get to later, where. Uh, it, Bitcoin starts to deviate uh, from having a relationship, a well, at least a non-inverse relationship with these uh, traditionalized markets. Um, but here, this is an article that I found talking about uh, somebody saying that the uh, typically the, the the March crash for Bitcoin, the, when the COVID pandemic came into the collective conscien consciousness, uh, 2019 is also typically like for example i'm going to talk about how uh, amazon bring paid by palm technology to whole foods these articles really started popping up uh, from what i saw going back around 2018 like i said so 2019 when the pandemic began but to go back to here um what this article says is however what taleb wrote about coronavirus in an essay in the new zurich times is worth considering a global pandemic is clearly a white swan, an event that is certain to occur at some point. Such pandemics are inevitable. They come as a result of the structure of the modern world, and their economic consequences will be even more serious as a result of increasing interconnectedness and exaggerated optimization. Pandemics have occurred again and again throughout human history, which is why it is white swans. The need prepared for, in fact, Taleb 
and a few other investors foresaw such a virus as a possible scenario and bet on it. With SARS, Ebola, and the influence of viruses, there have been several examples in recent years that have highlighted the exponential spread of such a pandemic, and I would definitely agree with this. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I never, like, not until the other day when I decided to look it up, I had, had no idea that a white song was actually a thing. I just kind of had the idea to look up whether or not there's something, you know, that's the, basically the antithesis of what a black swan event was. Came to this, which really kind of led me into wanting to make these points that I am right now, but again, you know, like I said, so the point with it is so customers' home signature will be linked to their credit cards, concerns raised about privacy and vulnerability in hackers. I have actually on my shorts on this channel a video that I posted some time ago about uh, somewhere in Europe where this uh, this woman used Amazon, uh, some sort of Amazon like uh, hardware kiosk in the grocery store to literally scan like her card information on the palm of her hand. She paid with the palm of her hand. Um, Right here, this is a uh, this is from GatesFoundation.org. is relative to Microsoft and Bill Gates. Uh, digital ID is a critical piece of digital public infrastructure. Digital IDs are one of the three pillars of what's known as digital public infrastructure, uh, or DPI. The others are digital payment systems and data exchange systems. Digital ID system is critical because people need a verified identity in order to tap into DPI's other benefits, from digital bank accounts and instant payments to mobile phone accounts and personal data management. Um, I don't know if any of you watch Black Mirror, but I forget. I'll probably pop up some sort of image from the show or this relative what I'm talking about right now. But there is an episode in a specific season of Black Mirror where uh, it talks about a society that has become basically dystopian, like dystopian utopian, where there is a social credit score. Basically, people have on their phones, just in technology in general, or have social credit scores, and you're basically your hierarchy and your ability to participate in society and your overall you know levels of enjoyability when it comes to just living life as a human you know does and should is all dictated upon a social credit score which is basically it's all tyranny to begin with um and that's essentially what i'm getting at here um now obviously at the end of the day i don't, I don't know what's going to happen um and all of this could end up being used uh, and implemented for positive purposes. And uh, like th this digitation of society that we've been seeing, especially with the onset of blockchain technology, you know, factoring the decoupling that I'm talking about. And if you really dive into you know, what's going on within, the, you know, the sociopolitical sphere, not in just, you know, of, you know, you know, America or, you know, Europe, somewhere in Europe, somewhere. Um, but I mean, really factoring all of that in, I personally think that all this stuff, they say that it's going to help with poverty, and I'm not denying that it wouldn't help with poverty, and I think it's pretty clear that something like this would help with poverty, but unfortunately, I personally believe that the hands that the, the ventriloquists who control and lead the affairs of, you know, intercontinental politics and, you know, some sort of global political system, which it seems we're being thrusted into, a little New World Order and whatnot, and, you know, that goes back decades, many decades ago, where people have talked about that. I mean, George Bush spoke about it numerous times. Bill, or not a Bill, but uh, Joe Biden has mentioned it within his recent presidency. I um, mean, think about like the World Economic Forum and the hands they have within you know, governments, uh, institutions, and such throughout the world. Uh, it all just seems to be heading to the fact that this is basically going to be used to monitor and surveil people uh, rather than, you know, bringing more freedom to people, which would be the best case of this kind of onset of this digital society that we're starting to see pop up right now. Um, this right here is a patent. This is one of them for a cryptocurrency system using body activity data that's relative to Microsoft, again, Bill Gates. Um, was the digital IDs that I just went over. He recently said something as well about digital IDs within the last like week or two weeks or so, but the human body associated to this patent, human body activity associated with a task provided to a user, maybe used in a mining process of a cryptocurrency system. A server may provide a task to a device of a user, which is communicatively coupled to the server. A sensor communicatively coupled to or comprised in the device of the user may sense body activity of the user body activity data may be generated based on the sense of body activity of the user the cryptocurrency system communicatively 
coupled to the device where the user may verify if the body activity data satisfies one or more conditions set by the cryptocurrency system and or cryptocurrency to the user whose body activity data is verified. There's images that go over this as well. Um, when you look this up, uh, there's a whole thing going on uh, around when this kind of this this patent really came to light to a certain set of people talking about how this is directly associated to having some sort of chip or device implanted within the skin or under the skin. Uh, you'll see plenty. Typically, when you look this up, you'll see plenty of websites, just like fact checking websites and such, saying and debunking it, saying they're debunking it. Typically, those websites have a clear bias in them, but saying that it doesn't mention anywhere, clearly, obviously, I just read the abstract out to you, it doesn't mention anything anywhere about actually inserting some sort of chip underneath the skin, but it doesn't specific, it doesn't explicitly say, it deny that either. It says, it just says a device. A server may provide a task to a device. That could be a wearable device, something like, you know, like Apple glasses, Google glasses, Apple watch, you know, whatever else, even your phone pretty uh, clearly. Or, you know, maybe some you know specialized hardware that some you know blockchain company or protocol came up with that sends people like something like XYO where people have physical devices that they're sent with respect to the protocol that that that, that blockchain runs. But uh, it like I said, it doesn't specifically deny that. So and this definitely could be something that is implanted underneath the skin because if I fast forward here a little bit, this is another article going back from 2018. It seems like five, six years ago was, as far as I'm concerned right now, when I went over for this video, was really when a lot of this stuff started popping up. Um, Sweden's typically, generally, kind of technologically ahead of the curve, at least you know where most people are right now in societies. Um, but the sub subtitle of this says, "No more worries about losing your wallet, but plenty about privacy." I mean, like you, within these, whether it's a microchip that's you know implanted under your skin, whether it's a quantum dot tattoo, this is also relative to Bill Gates and whatnot. Um, it doesn't matter because it's going to have all of your information, your medical history, your your, your financial, economic, monetary data. You know, like we already are, you know, tracked through our phones and things like that. I mean, even if it's not actively being done, I'm not making any claims absolute claims definitely to any of the stuff I'm going over in this video, but putting it out there because it's clearly due to all the evidence, a conclusion that one can come to, um, which brings me to this right here. No one knows who Edward Snowden is. This is a good summary. In 2013, Edward Snowden, a former CIA systems administrator and computer expert released confidential government documents to the press about the existence of government surveillance programs. Again, I'm not making any absolute claims here. I'm really kind of just simply going over information and drawing a conclusion uh, upon what all this most likely points to. But Snowden's actions violated the Espionage Act of 1917, which identified the leak of state secrets as an act of treason. He is currently exiled in Russia and is wanted in the U.S., where he could serve up to 30 years in prison for exposing human rights abuses by governments around the world. Snowden revealed the shocking extent of global mass surveillance when he shared U.S. intelligence documents with journalists in 2013. Snowden began accumulating information on NSA surveillance programs and activities while contracted, uh, contracted there from 2009 to 2013. But this also goes back to 2018, this article. Snowden releases NSA documents showing Bitcoin's number one priority. We scroll down here, actually, first I want to read this. Um, Edward Snowden is at, again, the time, this time the world's most notorious whistleblower has handed over national security agency documentation to online investigative news outlets. Their news outlet, The Intercept, revealing an invasive covert program to track Bitcoin users using spy tools he uncovered during the infamous first go-around. The implications include the future of privacy along with un, uh, along with warrantless data collection being used to prosecute Bitcoiners such as Ross Ulbricht of Silk Road. Again, those of you familiar with you know, the content of this channel and uh, the conclusions that I typically draw with respect to some sort of you know, information or data um, that I go over in this video. I personally think that this is true. I do think it's pretty clear and obvious. Like, for example, something that typically people will bring up is how you can be talking about, let's say you're just talking with a group of friends or whatever, and you're talking about some sort of topic. And let's say you're talking about some shoes you want to buy, or some shoes you saw that you want to buy recently. And, you know, after you get done having that conversation, you're over here, you know, scrolling on Twitter on your phone, you're on Google, and you're trying to search something up, and lo and behold, you see this ad that is quite literally the, the very shoes that you're talking about. Um, and that's just one of one of the many examples that could be give, that, given that we're, 
not only are phones listening to us, the data that is stored on our phones, especially that being, you know, iPhones being most, you know, at least in America speaking, iPhones typically are the majority, you know, phone that is used. Uh, but on here it says, so the, this is one of the data documents. It spends Bitcoin as number one priority um, in this document. Um, Right here says information gathered uh, wasn't just about transactions. In fact, the tracking may also in, have involved, and this is Bitcoin users, and, uh, that is uh, gathering intimate details of these users' computers. The NSA collected some Bitcoin users' password, and password information, internet activity, and a type of unique device identification number known as a MAC address. Uh, Mr. Biddle trains a MAC address is also known as a media access control address, a unique hardware identifier. CRISPR analogy would be to like in a MAC address to an American social credit or not social credit but social security number which remains with a person or device for their entire lives um yeah. but like I was saying I I've said in the past that I, I do think it's pretty clear the NSA also I saw some uh news about that recently on Twitter where uh, NSA created Bitcoin uh, in order to basically act as some sort of monitoring tracking surveilling uh, system for you know the American people and ultimately globally where because blockchain is something that can you know in an intercontinental sense it provide peer-to-peer uh, -peer interactions not just within the monetary realm of things but pretty much within every single realm that applies to contexts of peer-to-peer -peer interaction within a society to cohesively bring the entire globe together into some sort of you know global socio-political uh, realm uh, where like think it's something like nato where you have these kind of intercontinental groups where they where something like along these lines will run things uh where there's the basically like global society is broken down into regions uh, like you like let's say you know broken down into the uh, number of continents like you have region north america region south america so on and so forth and there's a global government over each of the regions of the entire globe. And, um, but really what I'm trying to say is that I do think Bitcoin is a Trojan horse. I do think that it is a psychological operation, basically, that is, it's, it's been, it's the best performing asset in human history. It is, I personally think, and I'm going to, like I said, in my community that was recently, I'm going to make a video about value in a philosophical sense, but I believe that Bitcoin is uh, at the very least, if not the best, but at the very least, the um, most accurate uh, attempt that the human mind in an engineering sense has a, uh, has done in terms of creating value in and of itself. Um, because Bitcoin, it, one, it's not physical, it's intangible, it's really, obviously there's hardware that and even uh, that mines Bitcoin using your processing power or you know graphics processing power whatever some sort of power to be put into the effectuation of what bit what the Bitcoin mining process is in order to unlock a block of transactions and add that to the over overall blockchain of, of Bitcoin in order to have a complete history of every single transaction and just all the information that is with direct respect to the uh, people using bitcoin over a period of time and there's nothing about bitcoin that is you know at the very least wholly an, uh, anonymous something like x uh, xmr would be like that monero would be a, a good privacy coin but bitcoin doesn't offer that and i think the fact that it is uh, the best performing asset for the reason that it is at the very least the best attempt at, at uh, humans engineering value in and of itself not just a value but there's a difference between value in and of itself and value and like i said i'll touch on this in a separate video but like bitcoin has got like especially bitcoin max these so many people because it's such a good performing asset it's making a lot of people money and money is when it comes to the driving forces of the human soul or psyche bleeding into one's conscious orientation to their will when it comes to guiding around what really drives people i mean really when it all boils down to money i think at the top um i mean if you even think about that it goes back to you know if you look at ancient texts for example the bible 
mentions that uh, money uh, the root being the root of all uh, of all evil not necessarily evil like obviously money can be used for good purposes and bad purposes but for the most part greed in a monetary sense doesn't get anybody anywhere good uh, looking back at history for the most part um, in the grand scheme of everything that's gone on like if you think about it going back to even did recently with the ukraine russian war and how much money has been funneled into that for like billions and billions and billions of dollars have been sent to that cause over there but the the, the fires that recently happened in Lahaina, hawaii you know they got like i think something similar to the stupid stimulus check like roughly a thousand dollars sent to them and that's literally a part of our country but yet we're funneling billions and billions of dollars into a Ukraine-Russian conflict. I'm not saying it's good or bad, really, um, that we're, you know, as a country trying to help out Ukraine. Obviously, Russia, it is a war crime and what they've done, and, and there's people innocently, you know, suffering due to just asinine nonsense of arrogant world leaders. But anyways, uh, Another point that I want to touch on is, so to kind of draw everything full circle in terms of the digitation society that I've gone over, the white swan events, that uh, surveillance monitoring, that Snowden information, the entire tangent that I just went on. Um, so if you look here at this Coindesk article, we can see Bitcoin's correlation coefficient with S&P 500, Dow Jones, industrial average, and NASDAQ composite has declined 50.5%, 30%, 49.4% respectively since January 1st. Correlation coefficient, uh, coefficients range from negative one to one with the former indicating inverse pricing relationship and the latter indicating a direct one. Uh, 2021, we also start to see a uh, you know, short period, not the, the genuine decoupling of Bitcoin from traditionalized fiat markets, but we started to see glimpses of it like we had in, you know before 2021 as well. Um, down here at the bottom, Bitcoin's correlation with gold and US dollar is 0.33 and negative 0.23, respectively. The proximity to zero for both implies no pricing relationship at all. Ironic, given early perceptions of Bitcoin as an inflation hedge. So we're seeing it not only from the you know stock market indices and such, but also with gold and US dollar. I mean, typically, for example, the DXY Bitcoins for the most part had an inverse relationship with that um, for the time being. The Bitcoin's been out uh, with respect to the US dollar. Um, but to kind of break down the decoupling, I don't think, like I've said, we've, we've been seeing, at least on, like currently within this year, we've been seeing instances of inverse correlation. 2021, we saw some as well. And then I think going back to around 14, 15, 2014, 15, 16, roughly, it's somewhere in that three year range, um, we saw, we were seeing some decoupling as well. And I think that's, what is logically uh, is supposed to happen and you know, we'll go uh, have been going forward from here as it will see leading up into the point when for example the market crashes and the traditional fiat market completely dies out we've seen these brief instances of you know short-term or medium-term decouplings of bitcoin from fiat uh all these are just brief glimpses of leading all the way up until that final point when we have that final death of fiat market and bitcoin long-term macro fully decouples bitcoin continues to go up in crypto broader cryptocurrency market and fiat dies off um creating that actual decoupling event which is what i believe is a white swan event i think the fiat subversion and the decoupling the stock market crashing and then the fact that blockchain solutions have been on the rise within the last 14 years are going to take the place of that and i'm labeling all this personally as a white swan event um goes back to what I went over as the definition for white swan rate uh, here on this coin market cap article recession rising unemployment unemployment hasn't been good in general in the last you know obviously since COVID began um, inflation as well it talks about recession the World Bank recently announced uh, that the global economy is heading into stagflation uh, sharing characteristics with recession um, and also uh, on top of that um, a crashing of the, the market, with the, even if it doesn't have some sort of respect to some of the factors I just mentioned, 
in general is definitely not a black swan type of event. It's inevitable at some point that some sort of market is going to have a period where it just, you know, has some sort of a significant crash or significant bear market. So that's definitely something that is, you know, sure to occur, as it says, uh, and can be basically, as it said up here, on current information, anticipated on current information of forecasting, which is what I've been doing this entire time, going back to all this information. Um, to go back to these patents right here, again, this is the same patent, but this is another one uh, filed through the World Intellectual Property Organization that basically just have to do with copyrighted intellectual copyrighted materials, uh, things along that nature. But this one right here is typically the one that's talked about. Uh, it's W02020060606. Uh, some people have broken this down and explained it as WO World Order 2020. 060606 me 666 so world order 2020 666 this also just eerily does connect in with the fact you know when you look in the book of revelation the mark of the beast 666 allowing people to buy and sell you know take it back to this right here we're putting microchips under the skin it's all you know going back to this article amazon and whole foods you know using palm signatures the right hand or the forehead. I'm not really seeing anything in respect to the forehead when it comes to stuff like this. The digital ID again. Um, I think this is this right here is definitely the biggest point. Uh, you know, factoring in what I mentioned earlier was the digitization of society through blockchain and that fiat crashing. Um, the what uh, the the NSA stuff with respect to Edward Snowden giving direct information. And evidence to the fact that you know we are being surveilled, uh, monitored, having basically there, there's a file, there's a data bank on every single citizen, especially if something like China. It's already clear that China is doing it and is really the ones that really want a social credit score, especially a global one implemented. Um, um, but that was really all that I wanted to go over um, here in this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed again. None of this is financial advice. Uh, none of the claims made in this video are absolute claims. Who knows if this crash is going to happen here for the stock market? Who knows, you know, if we see Bitcoin continue to go up from here, maybe we'll see something. Maybe Bitcoin, you know, goes all the way to zero. That's completely possible. That's totally possible. I think it's highly unlikely, but you know, it's definitely possible. Maybe, you know, Ukraine and Russia starts World War III, or, you know, even worse, and everything, just society just bore, not even, just absolutely and wholly collapses. That's definitely possible, especially with the rising tensions in, all across the entire globe. But all that being said, hopefully you enjoyed, and hopefully able to learn something uh, in this video. Um, but I hope you all have a blessed day. Such a long time, long time is what we've been through You're on me like a tattoo